What's up, guys? This is Kyle from Wax Museum. Hope everybody's having a great week so far. So by now, you have probably seen my pre-national purchases, which included a couple nice Reggie Millers. You've seen my national purchases, which there was a variety of cards in there. And now I want to show you that kind of the theme of this video is going to be post-national purchases. And when I say that, I mean immediately following the national like I was in the car on the way home buying cards and that that is no joke. So I wasn't going to show you these first two, but there were some circumstances surrounding them that I thought maybe you'd get a kick out of or you'd enjoy seeing or maybe you could share in my pain on one of them. So this first one here, this was a 99 cent auction and it's it was a uh, redemption in 2005 of 2006 called Performance Clause and you'd scratch it off and if Danny did, you know, whatever this feat was here on the card, you'd submit this online and then they'd send you a jersey card. So it's kind of a cool idea, you know, they had to perform for you to get this card. It's kind of, you know, we hate redemptions, but that one's kind of cool. It's like a, you know, what a redemption should be. So anyway, uh, it shows up via the standard envelope program and I have not seen a top loader bent like that in a long time. So hey, you know, that dealer or that seller, they tried, right? I can't really fault them for trying. They had some thin cardboard in there. Sometimes it just happens. But uh, bent that one up a little bit, and then this one is bent all along the back. So anyway, it, it was a 99 cent win. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that, but, you know, womp, 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 bummer. So this one here is a Jimmy Hart card. So first off, you're probably thinking, why are you buying that? Well, he's going to be at a show that I'm at here pretty soon. And I, I thought, you know what, let me get a decent card for him to sign. So this was $10 shipped. It shows up in a, like a, a cube media mailbox and with 392 shipping on it and there's tons of packing material on the inside and then I unravel it and the final piece these two are kind of attached together so there's the card but there was also this cassette tape and I can't say that that has ever happened before I, I thought it was kind of strange I'm not gonna complain because you know I just got a card that was like bent really bad so if you're gonna protect a card with a cassette tape like kudos to you so uh, this was a, you know, some type of a thrifter selling account, but hey, I've never seen that before. So yeah, I guess, I guess I've won. All right, let's go on to this next one here. This was definitely a, I hit this bin on the way home from the airport in the car because my, uh, I was not driving, so somebody else was driving. But this is a Hall of Fame patch of somebody that has never had relics before. And this is one I identified on a checklist early on that uh, it's in a, a, leaf, a leaf product. So it's one I identified early on, one that I knew I would be looking for, and I was curious what the patches would look like. I thought they would be NBA patches, but as you're going to see here in a moment, they're actually uh, international patches. So this one is a dual patch card. Man, that looks really good, too. A dual patch card of Reggie Lewis, and that it's got some yellow on it. It's from they have a warm up jacket. I've seen it before in Leaf stuff, and Drazen Petrovic, um, and that's like the Yugoslavia patch from an international uniform. So I'll have to do some digging on that to see what I can come up with. But that foil looks great. You know, I, I know you know if you're not going to have a, the pictures of the players on the card, this is about as nice as it can get. It's number two out of two. I've seen some other ones pop up. This is the nicest draws and patch that I've seen so far. So I did not want to let that one slip away. And man, that looks really good. Very happy with that. All right. So usually I would save the big one, the big card for the end. This is a, I, I consider this to be a pretty big PC card. So this is one that someone found at the National uh, and purchased it and I did not see it at the National. I would have purchased it myself but uh, Because I didn't go crazy spending at the National. I still had the funds for this and they were kind enough to you know, Seek out a Pacers fan and try and find a buyer for this and that buyer was me I was very happy to see this one just show up in my Instagram inbox We made a pretty quick deal Um it's a 2013 Immaculate Paul George. This is before they did um, a lot of the... They actually did nameplates in these jumbo patch sets that year. So this is one out of five, and it you know it appears to be the GE... The first GE, I believe, because also it's numbered one out of five from 
that last name. Um, let's take a look at... That looks pretty clean. That looks good. So I've already got the Pacers logo piece from that set, but... Uh, you know I like my letters. This is my first Paul George, like, full... I, I would say full letter, yeah. I know I don't technically have that little part there. It, maybe it's even... Some of it's underneath there, but that is the majority of it. And then even part of the E there. It's my first one. Wow, so... Mail day started off kind of a bummer with that Granger. Um, and then I won. Then I had, got this card here. And got this card as well. So uh, we're going to line those up here. Uh, I would say yes that I won. So let me know what you think in the comments. Did I win or did I not? Remember, there are new episodes of the audio podcast that come out every Thursday. And as always, thanks for watching.